Hi, hi, hi. Hi, Ness. Uh, so we're, let me allow, allow me to introduce a little bit uh, the person here. Uh, this is Dr. Bonin Lee, who, who is the, sorry, there's Hello. a kind of echo. Uh, so he's the lead, uh, I, I would say the lead uh, of the Taiwanese uh, semiconductor education. So I'm inviting him to join us and he will do some kind of live Q&A uh, after the, the, the session. So yeah. And please go ahead and to to, uh, to share your screen, and we will. Without further ado, let's do your talk. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I joined a bit late. Yeah, uh, that's that's perfectly. Please go ahead, and if, you, if it's okay with you, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so thanks very much for inviting me to do this presentation. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, there's a, a rich history in semiconductors um, around the around the world, but especially in your area. And now, of course, there's the um, the huge impact of all the fabrication that's going on there. Um, and I've only been involved in ASICs for the last couple of years, so I'm very new to this. Um, and I'll just introduce a little bit about myself right now. Um, I work for Yosis HQ, who you may know do uh, open source synthesis tools, and those tools are used in all the open source ASIC flows. Um, and uh, we also do formal verification tools, also open source. Uh, I have a course called the Zero Voice course that aims to teach you everything you need to know to get so, your own chips made. Sorry for interruption. In the so, so, sorry for interruption. Uh, uh, Dr. Paul, Dr. Lee, could you uh, move a little bit? There's a lot of echo from your end. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry, Matt, please go ahead. That's okay. I was wondering what that noise was. <laughs> um, and uh, chip flow. Uh, which is a startup that is aiming to make the most of this uh, new oncoming open source semiconductor tools to help um, get more product companies making their own chips. Uh, so if you're interested to find out about any, any more of those, you can uh, check the links in the presentation. And I'll be sharing a link to this presentation uh, later on. So if there's anything, uh, I've got lots of links in the presentation. And if you want to do further research, then you can uh, use the presentation as a, a jumping off point. So just before I continue, uh, Ruinland, is the audio and the video everything OK? Uh, we, we cannot see your slides. Did you just did it, disable it? Or, it will, if, or will, will you reshare it again? No, they should be shared. Oh, sorry. You're, you're, so your slice is, is gone. <laughs> Can you reshare it or... Uh, sorry. <laughs> is that... No, that's good. Is that, is that working? Yeah, it's, it's come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 here, it's here now. I will ping you to the... Okay. Uh, could you translate... Change, uh, 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 oh, okay, I will do it from my end. I will change the layout so it will be on the... Okay. Great. So, yeah. Let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, if it stops sharing again, let me know because I aim to be sharing the screen for the whole presentation. I don't mean to turn it off. <laughs> okay. 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 Please go ahead. Good. Okay. Um, so let's take a quick review. So thanks for the amount of time that you've given me today. It's quite a lot of time. So um, I'm going to give a quick review of what has happened over the last two years in this space because things are changing very quickly. Um, and uh, I'm also going to give you a demo of the tools in action and show you the kinds of things that we're getting out of the tools. Um, so let's start off with the, uh, the quick review. So in 2020, uh, we had the uh, open source Sky 130 PDK, which is, as far as I know, is the world's first open source process design kit. 
and um, that's important for quite a few reasons. One makes it much easier for people to get involved without having to sign an NDA. So if you're doing educational work, that's a real key thing. Um, and the other thing that was announced was uh, having a free opportunity to make uh, your own chips. So I had actually just started playing around with some ASIC tools, a tool flow called Qflow, um, and I was, a, I was getting GBS, which is the file you need to send to the foundry. Um, but when I found out how much it was going to cost to make the chips, I thought this is probably not going to be something that I do much of. But when Google decided to pay for the uh, free shuttles, so there's a, a lottery system, uh, there's a shuttle that runs about once every quarter, and there's 40 slots on that shuttle. And if your design is open source, you can make an application. And I've applied to all six of the uh, shuttle opportunities, and my designs have been accepted on five out of those six. And I've had about um, 10 or 12 different chips made now. Um, my first uh, use of the open source, uh, open lane tools, I'll talk about a bit more about the tool flow uh, later, uh, made in July. I did a presentation in November, and we did a, I did my first tape out with a group of other people um, in December for MPW1. That was the first free shuttle opportunity. Um, in 2021, eFabulous which is the company that provides engineering experience and helps us interface with the foundries and has done a lot of the work on uh, getting the open source PDK and the open source tools working together, uh, brought up one of their test chips. So that was good to see that things were looking like they were going as expected. And in May, they announced a commercial version of the uh, free shuttle. So that's $10,000 for 300 chips. Uh, then in June, we had the MPW2 uh, tape out date. In October, we got MPW1 silicon back, but due to some problems in the tool chain, which I'll mention a bit more later on, we thought that it was going to be a complete write off due to hold violations. So if you're into silicon, you'll know what that means and how scary that is, but if you don't, then I'll explain a bit more later. Um, November, December, we had MPW3 and 4 tape out. Uh, November, we also had Remoticon 2021. I finally got my own chips back from MPW1 in January, so it was a whole year for that uh, process. Ideally, things are going to go down to six months or so, but um, this first one took a long time because it was the first run through with the, the, the first PDK and the new tools. MPW5 was March. MPW2 wafers came out in April, um, and MPW6 was in June, and we're expecting um, MPW7 in September, and there's more uh, foundries coming online and more PDKs coming online later this year. So that brings us up to the uh, present date. So I'm just going to give you a bit of information now about uh, my own first chip. So. Uh, this what this um, because when I first started with I've done a bit of FPGA experience, um, but I wasn't really used to how much space we had available. So on these shuttles, it's 130 nanometers, which is uh, large. It's quite an old node, about 20 years old now. Uh, but 130 nanometers is still very very small, and we have 10 square millimeters in this uh, space here that we're allowed to use. And so I was finding that my designs were very small. So I did a collaboration with some other people and we put uh, nine designs here, um, eight designs that have a kind of a function and then uh, this big block at the bottom was a big multiplexer that can set each of the designs to be the one that is uh, controlling all the IOs. Uh, I've got lots more information about uh, MPW1 if you want to find out more on this link here. And like I said before, I'll be sharing the link to this presentation at the end of this talk. So we had these eight projects here by me and some uh, friends uh, and mucks. On the chip at the bottom part, this part here, we have um, a RISC-V processor and two kilobytes of SRAM. Um, and we have a bit of firmware here that can 
decide which design should be enabled. So uh, the MUX did work, as we found out that MPW My Chips works. Um, but there was a, quite a few problems I had, uh, largely because I was doing everything by hand, because um, it was the first time through, and we didn't have much time. And I was very worried about making some mistake that was going to render the whole chip useless. So I was very happy when the chips got back and I got all my designs working. It wasn't that straightforward because I mentioned that we had these hold violations, um, uh, which I'll, I'll mention a little bit uh, later on in the presentation. If you want to get more information about my MPW designs, you can check this out. So I thought what technical talk would be complete without a demo. So what better way to uh, show this stuff than doing a demonstration? So I've got the, um, the tools installed on my computer here. Um, and uh, just turn on the environment. I have tools for lots of the different uh, shuttles on here. So I'm activating uh, the tools for the, the seventh shuttle with this command. Um, and we have this PDK here, uh, which is two gigabytes installed, and uh, it's now very, very quick to set up the PDK and the open lane ASIC tools. It takes about two minutes. Um, I'll give you more information about how to set that up later. Uh, and then we have this open lane directory, and inside there we have a design directory, and then in here we have um, a list of all the, the designs that kind of come as examples. Um, and I'm going to be using this one called Seven Segment Seconds, which is an extremely um, simple design. It just uh, divides a 16 megahertz clock down into seconds. Um, then it uses a bit of sequential logic to count, and then a decoder with some asynchronous logic to decode that into a, a seven segment display. Um, if you're used to Verilog, just the hardware description language I use, uh, this is extremely uh, simple and straightforward, but for people who aren't familiar with Verilog, I'll just give a very quick run through. Uh, Verilog is a way of describing hardware, so it looks like C, but it's not really C, and that can be quite confusing when you start off. We have this uh, definition of the ins and outs of the module, um, telling it uh, that I want some registers which are kind of roughly comparable to variables, although these registers will be created as actual real hardware chains of flip-flops in the design rather than being uh, register spaces in a CPU, like if you're using a programming language. And then I have a, a sequential circuit here, which is triggered only on the clock, and it basically does the comparing, uh, counting up to 16 a million, and when it uh, rolls back over to zero, it adds one to a digit. So this is going to be creating two hardware adders uh, and some comparison circuitry, and then take that number and put it out uh, through the seven segment decoder, which is asynchronous logic, which means that as soon as an input changes, the output changes. So it's like a big collection of ands and ors and nots. And essentially, as this uh, decimal number comes in, it puts on the eight, the seven-bit output, uh, the, the the ones and zeros necessi necessary to turn that number into a seven-segment display. And I can uh, synthesize this and show you um, how Yosis will take that hardware description language and then turn it into a digital netlist and this is essentially what gets sent into the open lane tools. So going back to open lane, this is one of the available tool flows that we have. It's currently probably the most popular one. It's the one that I know most about. We put our design in the beginning. Uh, we use Yosis to do the synthesis. Um, we do static timing analysis, which can measure how fast the circuit can run by looking at the, uh, the digital logic that is used to create that circuit. And we have a feedback loop here that we can do 
some iterations on to get better timing if we need to. The current design for test is currently not implemented. Um, we come back through here. This everything in this green section here is provided by um, Open Road, which is a set of applications that has been under development for 10 years or so. is funded by DARPA in the States and is aiming to create a full open source ASIC flow. And they provide these floor planning and placement optimization and routing stages. Uh, then we do antenna diode insertions, um, which I won't talk much about, but is uh, important uh, in semiconductors to get a good yield. Um, within the semiconductor industry, there is a huge amount of depth. The supply chains are enormously long. The software is very complicated. The physics of how it all works is very complicated. So this, is, this whole talk and presentation is at a very high level, assuming not much um, knowledge. And so I could talk for, or experts could talk for hours and hours about any one of these points, and I'm just giving a very brief high-level overview of this whole flow. Uh, then we do detailed routing, come back through here. We extract the whole circuit, including the resistances and the capacitances, capacitances of all the wires. And then we do another static timing analysis to see if where the cells have ended up and all the routing, how these wires are connected together, whether that's going to change the timing and mean that the design is going to work or work too slowly. And then we stream out the uh, GDS2 files, which are the files, if you've done circuit board design before, they're a bit like the Gerber files that you use to send to the factory. The only difference here is we've got about 40 or 50 layers that we send instead of a normal kind of 4, 8 or 10 layers that we send to a, a PCB fab. Uh, you can get the tools downloaded from here. Uh, and I've also written a summary tool that I'm going to be using in this demo uh, here, which knows where all the locations of the intermediary files are. So let's run open lane now on these uh, tools, on this design. I'll come back up to open lane. It's provided as a docker with all the tools installed, so I've just uh, mounted the docker there. And then I'm going to start running the tool. Seven, seven seconds. Let me just um, time it as well. This is a very, very small, short design, so it's pretty quick. It'll probably still take three or four minutes, though. Um, and as that's running, I'll start a new terminal. Just using my summary tool now. And we can uh, look at some basic stats as the design is working. So this is uh, this is the list of the standard cells that Yotis has decided we need to, to to build seven second seconds. We need 430 standard cells broken up uh, like this. So we've got uh, and or gates, uh, and gates, buffers, inverters, muxes. Three types of NANs, some NORs, ORs, um, plenty of different cells here. Um, there we go. This one is flip flop, so we needed 52 flip flops for that because we're going to need at least 24 for the, uh, the seconds divider and then another um, 12, 16 for the, um, the digit counter. Let's just take a quick look also at, um, in the PDK, oops, we get all these standard cells that we can use, and uh, I just loaded them all up. So all these different cells that I just mentioned, here we have on the left-hand side, we've got about 140 of them. So if we take that uh, DX uh, flip-flop, uh, you can see this is the standard cell. These are the layers that are in use to make it work. There's about 24 different transistors here all connected together. Um, and it builds up a flip-flop. And if we now take a look at um, a much simpler um, standard cell, this is just an inverter. If the input goes in high, the output comes in low. And this is built with complementary MOSFETs, CMOS. So we've got 
um, N-type MOSFETs at the bottom and P-type MOSFETs at the top, and they're joined together into push-pull arrangements. Uh, we've just finished this, so that whole flow took one minute and 44 seconds. Uh, let's, so let's continue with our, um, our route through. So we've just looked at synthesis. I'm going to go down now to floor planning. Um, so floor planning is looking at, okay, working at how much space we need. Um, working out where the IOs are going to be um, and giving us a kind of area. So let's see, let's measure the space. So this is 140 microns square. And then let's look at uh, the global routing. So now this is um, given us the power distribution network. So these uh, plus and minus lines run through the design. And then all these standard cells have now been placed roughly kind of close to where they need to be to fit the pins and also what functionality they're going to be uh, fulfilling. And then, but one thing is that they're not snapped to the grid um, or aligned very well with the PBM yet. So that gets done in detailed routing. And now everything is on the grid. Things should all be, see all these big cells, those are the, the flip-flops, they're all kind of grouped together because they're forming these uh, registers. Uh, we've got the IOs. And then the final stage is uh, generating the GPS. And now we have all the routing between all the cells, all the missing spaces being taken up by uh, filler, filler cells, and here we've got a list of all the different cells in use, and I can turn those on and off. So, for example, I can turn off all the decoupling capacitors that are used to fill up the space. Now we can see what's this one down at the bottom? Decap 12. It's funny. It's normally in alphabetical order, and I've already turned off the decap, so I'm not sure where that one is. But you can see there's more space uh, now available. So the efficiency, the density of this design could be uh, even smaller, but we just wanted to get the tools done quickly. So this is now the, full, the final design for that seven second seconds. We could now uh, integrate this into a design to EPUB, send it off and get our chips made. So when you want to make a submission to eFabless, you do get this whole 10 square millimetres. This part here is always uh, present, which has a risk 5 core and some memory and some stuff to help you do the bring up, which can be uh, more complicated than you want sometimes. And then we can put our designs in here. Um, like I said, we had problems with this seven segment display countdown with all the, the, uh, the designs we put on MPW1 because we had hold problems. And those are caused uh, by not having enough time for the flip-flops to register data correctly. And unfortunately, you can't fix those problems by slowing down the clock. Um, but we were able to uh, get things working by very carefully undervolting the hold of time and slowing things down. And that whole thing was caused by a misconfiguration in the tools so that the clock tree was synthesized in a not very balanced way. And that has been fixed for MPW2 and, and forward. So if you want to find out more about that, you can find out about that on this link. Uh, but uh, I was very happy that with a little bit of work on getting the voltage right, this tiny small design here, I did actually manage to get it working, although I had to kind of fake it because I could only get six out of the seven segments working at once. But that video was a, a demo of my design, of that design that you just saw being synthesized with those open source tools, being put onto the EFLAB lift shuttle, being made by Skywater Foundry in the US, being packaged, being sent to me, mounted on a test board, and then running uh, that design and actually getting the output. So that was really, really fantastic step for me. My first uh, very simple designs working on an ASIC.
but now's a good uh, moment just to um am i still showing my screen yeah um now's a good moment just to mention that uh, one of the ways that i'm now involved in this space is i run a course called the zero to eight course so 200 people have taken the course and we've submitted designs on all the shuttles it assumes no prior knowledge, so this is a really good way of uh, getting involved if, you want, if, you, if this does seem interesting to you and something that you want to find out more about, uh, check out the course. I've also been working with eFabless to help with the, um, the messaging and creating documentation. And I recently did a half an hour video that did a complete run through from downloading and setting up the tools putting a simple design on, to running all the tests, to generating the GDS, to sending it out to eFabless and getting uh, the chip submitted to the shuttle. So that is about a half an hour watch on YouTube and you can check that out, you don't have to pay or anything. I'll just have a, a quick drink of water. So for MPW2 and onwards, um, I moved to a more automated design handling for putting people's designs together. So with the course, we typically take um, not always up to 16, but around 16 or so designs, and we put them all together onto one submission so that we can uh, make the most of the pressure silicon. And each project has all the inputs always connected, but the outputs go through a tri-state buffer. So if they're not turned on, the outputs are floating, and they don't affect the bus, but a bit of firmware can turn on the tri-state for a specific project. And you see that's what these highlighted lines are here. If I want to turn on this project, I turn on this line. It activates the tri-state buffers, and then the outputs of project zero control uh, the outputs of the actual chip. Um, and I've, I've successfully used that from MPW 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Although we're still waiting for silicon to come back, it's now out of the factory. MPW2 is being tested right now, so I should be able to validate that this all does work. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, so now let's take a quick overview of uh, the tools in the space. That was something that Ruan said that he was especially interested in, so I wanted to include that in the presentation. Um, I built a list of a whole load of open source ASIC resources on a GitHub page so you can click this link and get a big page of loads of resources and these ones at the top are kind of the more digital focused uh, tools to so have open lane i demoed open roads um, is less of a complete flow but you can still use it it takes a bit more work to get running silicon compiler is another end-to-end -end asic flow as is coriolis 2 um, oss cad suite contains all the fpga and synthesis tools that you would need for doing FPGA development. Um, and we also have um, OS FPGA and VHDL support, uh, to just mention a few there. On the analog side, um, we've got Magic and K-Layout. K-Layout was a tool that I was just using to show the GDS, but you can also use it to draw. Uh, x -Scan is a way of doing schematic capture um, and also builds into synthesis, um, simulation. Mosaic is a more modern schematic capture. NG Spice is a simulation tool for analog, and Zeiss is a, a, a kind of an upgraded NG Spice, more modern, uh, being funded fairly heavily, can do parallel simulation, which is important because the analog simulation is incre incredibly slow compared to the digital stuff. And GDS actually lets you uh, draw GDS shapes very accurately and is in use for photonics. So what's missing, that's an important question. We do have everything we need to do um, digital and analog designs all the way through, and we're getting results back. Uh, but we do have tools that are missing for RF designs, uh, which is important. We want to be able to do things like radios. Uh, we're lacking full wave solders, solvers. Um, we've got only a few different types of analysis. We don't have harmonic balance, transient noise, etc. We, they do exist, but we haven't kind of checked them. We have. We need to actually do, start doing verification. Uh, we could do with improvements to the physical verification. We need this to be scalable for new PDKs. It takes a lot of work at the moment to add a new PDK to be able to be 
uh, used in this process. Uh, better mixed signal simulation, so if you're doing an analog and a digital design together, you want to be able to check that everything works together as you expect it, and that's actually a lot harder than it should be right now. Um, design for Tester said that was one of the things that was missing in um, the open lane uh, tool flow. Design for Test here, you would want to insert a scan chain or a way of being able to easily access the interior parts of your uh, project. Um, there is work in progress there, but it's still uh, under test. Simulating power, simulating clock and clock distribution, and also a, a library of proven analog IP would be great, like a big block of uh, analog to digital converters, uh, clock drivers, CERDES, gigabit ethernet, all this kind of stuff. We're waiting for this library to get built out and be tested and be useful so we can uh, use different bits and pieces and know that it's going to work together. So having said that, let's take a look at some of the example projects that have been taken out over the last two years on the open source uh, flow on the Google free shuttle. So MPW1, uh, there was a very interesting um, processor taped out that aims to run uh, micro Python and had a bunch of USB peripherals. And one of them, uh, especially the USB peripheral, uh, is microcoded, so it's a very nice bit of IP. So the idea is you could take this USB block, drop it in, and then with a bit of microcode, set it to be an audio interface or a keyboard interface or a mouse interface or whatever you want. Um, this little nice screenshot here is a PLL for a three gigahertz radio. Uh, Thomas Parry building amateur satellite radio transceiver, and that's a very interesting project. Fuse Risk is uh, two RISC-V processes with some custom FPGA fabric in between them, and the FPGA fabric is supported by uh, Yosis and NextPNR. Subservient is a tape-out of Surf, which is a very, very tiny RISC-V processor, the smallest one. Uh, analog Neural Networks, MPW3 saw some testing of some other tools, so Coriolis 2, um, and flex cell rather than using open lane and the standard PDK, um, an 8 bit A to D, and uh, RISC V Arduino. MPW4 saw uh, some space hardened stuff, a fun um, transistor in the shape of a skull and crossbones, radiation hardened chip. Uh, MPW5 saw a Delta Sigma audio DAC, uh, Microwatts, which is a, a new type of processor coming out of um, from Anton Blanchard from IBM. OpenFA SOC is uh, analog generators, programmatic analog generators. Uh, MPW6 saw a 10 bit uh, SAR ATD, uh, some reram tests, and some chaos generators. But these are just very, very brief. Uh, sample projects. If you want to have a browse through, then you can use the eFabless website, and I've also just re re written a command line tool that lets you list all the tools and search them by their tape out status or uh, use grep or whatever you want to search for the, um, the descriptions of the projects. I've just heard a ping on the uh, message, let me check what that was. Is that a message from, from you? Uh, 20 minutes left notification, thank you. So just a word on RISC-V. Um, I did a presentation for uh, RISC-V Japan recently and one, I did a bit of data mining and over the uh, six shuttles there's been 270 RISC-V CPUs take it out. Um, I did a little bit of a breakdown here. We've got these other CPU types here, but RISC V is the dominator. And then split up by type. Uh, these are all the different types. There's a lot of active development and testing going on with RISC V in this space. And now I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some of the related uh, work in the field. So, uh, SRAM characterization. Uh, we have an SRAM generator block that generates the IP that we use for the kilobyte SRAM if you need to use fast memory on your designs. 
but we didn't really know how well it worked, so Andrew Zinnenberg did some very interesting um, characterization with a test board and an FPGA, and as we get new versions, we can mount it on this test board, uh, plug it into the top of this board, and then run through this test again. If you want to find out more about that, you can check this. He really knows what he's doing in terms of high-speed signal um, integrity and analysis, so it's a very interesting set of videos to check out. Uh, we had a uh, fully open source ASIC focus conference last year that I organized with a lot of interesting talks uh, spread out over two days. Uh, there's the uh, there's WOSET workshop on open source EDA technology where people send us papers and uh, we review them and then there's a, a two day schedule of presentations and you can check out the uh, papers and video presentations that were given in 2021 here and it's also being organized for 2022. Uh, there's been a lot of work now on putting the ASIC tools uh, running in the cloud, especially as either Jupyter Notebooks or GitHub Actions. So Proppy has been doing a lot of interesting work in enabling CMOS simulation and running the open lane tools and browsing the GDS files and that is uh, really great for doing academic work and being able to share your results or educational work and avoiding big downloads. So if you imagine being able to um, let your students do simulation of these standard cells that I was talking about earlier like ands and ors, but being able to do that all within the browser and without having to download uh, gigabytes of tools on your classroom computers, there's a huge amount of potential here for education, something that I'm especially excited in. And we've got uh, GitHub Actions. I've been working on a few GitHub Actions that can do things like installing the PDK, installing the tools, running the flow, running all the tests. And these are the kinds of things that I use um, for people on my course to make sure that the designs are all working. I recently had a very interesting interview with uh, a guy called Teo, who's been working on bringing up the open source uh, synthesis tools up to parity with the proprietary tools on matching the performance of their hardware adders. So previously, Yosis would always synthesize the same type of adder, which is kind of in the middle of this performance space. But if you wanted faster or smaller adders, for example, you couldn't choose those. So he did some very interesting work with allowing different types of structures of the, the carry chains of adders that allow you to uh, specify, I want an extremely fast adder because it's for the ALU of a risk v processor, or I want a very slow but space efficient adder because I'm just doing like this seven segment seconds example that I showed you earlier and I just want my design to be really small. Uh, so more information on that here if you want to find out. And uh, we are testing his designs on MPW6. So now I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about tiny tape out, which is something I've also been uh, discussing with Ruinland. And uh, it seems like we're going through a bit of a Sputnik moment at the moment. Everyone wants to make sure that they uh, can have the skills uh, needed for uh, working in the semiconductor industry, we have these huge, very spread out, long supply chains. People are worried. We've got the EU and the US Chips Act, and more and more people are talking about education and getting more people into the pipeline to be able to be working on semiconductors in the future. It's obviously not just a question of um, the material being available and the opportunities being available, but also that people think of it as a, as a valid career choice, and we see that uh, working in software is currently something that people are preferring due to better salaries. That's also something that needs to get fixed. Uh, but the educational side of things is important, and Tiny Tape Out aims to uh, bring the barrier to entry lower for design and manufacture of ASICs uh, to high school students or makers or entry level courses at university, open source silicon enthusiasts. Uh, but ultimately creating the opportunity for all high stu school tech students to design and receive their own chips. Uh, so it's a big goal, um, quite a difficult one to meet, but this is an idea of how what we could do to enable that. 
Uh, so I've already got a lot of experience with my own uh, course and something that's very important is that the course should be standalone. So you come into the course, you have an introduction on how the PVKs work, uh, you do simulation of standard cells in a web browser, there's no download of tools for this. Um, you do some problem solving uh, with digital logic, you build some combinational logic to start with, and then you move on to um, sequential logic and build these very small, simple circuits. And each segment of the course would be supported by templates and solutions, video introductions, and additional resources if you want to go further. Uh, you build your digital designs in the browser. So I've been working with Uri Shackard, who's um, built this uh, cool website called Wokwe, which is mainly for Arduino simulation but he's uh, adapted it for us to use with digital logic. And we have this uh, very simple standard cell library here. And I can uh, give you an example of a, uh, a running simulation in a browser. So I can just press the play button here. I've got a 10 kilohertz clock signal coming in, and then these 12 clock dividers to get a slower flashing LED at the back. And we're running this simulation at 100% at uh, real time and what we now has an API which allows me to take this number and use that to get a Verilog netlist which will be uh, useful for the next um, section so uh, let's move on these are examples of the kinds of things that you can build in a very small area so these are all for 70 by 70 microns so these are some of the first kind of tutorial lessons, 8-bit counters, um, and uh, like this one is like the seven segment display. So you can see it easily fits in that 70 by 70. I'm not going to have missed a slide, here we go. So after we've got the, uh, the, uh, the URL, that number from Wokwe, we can use a GitHub action, uh, which builds the GDS in the cloud. So I can come here, edit this make file, change the number here and then when the github action runs it um, will automatically install download the tools um, and generate me the gds so again i don't need to uh, install anything or download anything and then i can see uh, the, the result of my design here so this is the the layout and i've also got all the uh, the information here on the reports, this the final summary report, the synthesis report. So we're going to give everyone 100 by 100. Everyone's going to get eight ins and outs. Um, you can run through this whole process. And then at that point, um, you will have experienced the process and you'll have learned something about digital design and ASICs and semiconductors. But now there's a paywall, so now you can optionally pay for your design to be manufactured or your school can pay for you. Uh, we're aiming for $100 would get you your design on a chip, mounted on a PCB in your hand, and $25 would just get your design on a chip. So why would you bother with just getting a design on a chip? Well, that means it's, you can then, uh, as a school or a hackerspace, you can get an even cheaper price because you could get a workshop of 10 people, nine of them just put designs on, one of them gets the design and the, uh, the chip. Because all the designs are put on the chip, that means that the chip you get back can then be used to test all 10 designs. So that brings the cost of participation lower and you get your hands on the chip that has your design on it for a very low price. So how do we put all these designs on? My current working demonstration, which I'll be taping out on MPW7, uh, features 500 designs at 100 by 100 and a little driver in the corner that can use the scan chain. So because it's a scan chain, things are uh, slower, but for beginner digital projects, that's no problem. We can still run them at 100 kilohertz. And we get 300 chips back, and those would then get mounted onto a PCB that we can then send out to people. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about how the scan chain works, you can uh, uh, check this. Uh, during this process while you're waiting, so that's one problem, six month wait is a long time for young people to wait. We're looking at ways of accelerating that. Um, but you would get emails about basics, ideas for designs, this week's coolest voted design, 
virtual factory tours, information when the wafers are out, information about when the PCBs are set up and sent. So that's, um, that's tiny tape out. And I've got another uh, few minutes, I hope. Yeah. Uh, around ten minutes, so ten minutes uh, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, will, I will ask around if there anyone here want to ask questions. Yeah, get, if you can get a list of any questions, and just in the last couple minutes, I'm going to do a quick, a very quick summary of what's happening next. Okay, so no one's here. No, no one live here is going to ask questions. But, uh, but, but uh, Dr. Lee, could you, yeah, could you bring some comments or questions here, please? Uh, uh, yes. let, let me, let me just, let me just finish. Let me just oh, finish okay. this off. I just need uh, two more minutes. Okay, okay. Um, so we've got multiple educational projects happening. Uh, we've got the IEEE Chipathon. We've got lots of funding happening in the space. We've seen the EU and the uh, US Chips Act. The EU Chips Act specifically mentions open source multiple times in their investment plan. Uh, we have a huge amount of community growth um, we've got the 90 nanometer uh, PDK that's just been announced last week from Skywater, and we're expecting another, 100, another 130 and 180 coming soon. And uh, now's the time to get involved. So uh, get download the tools, follow my video, take my course. Uh, next uh, tape out is MPW7 on uh, the 12th. As a thank you uh, to being invited for this presentation I've made, uh, five two hundred dollar discount codes for my course. You just need to use cost cup twenty two as the um, the promotional code. Uh, lots of resources here, and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Sign up to my newsletter, and if you want to check out in detail any more of what I've been talking about, then the slides are all on this link here. So that's it. That's my presentation. Thanks very much Thank uh, you. for your interest and uh, your time. And yeah, if there's any questions, then I believe we've got uh, five minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Leeps, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mason. You, you, uh, your slide provides a very interesting and a very promising process of open source EDA tools. And uh, since the, the, the time is limited, so I would like to ask you, can you share with us your experience to avoid uh, the uh, the failure you, you encountered in MPW1 so that uh, we might be able to bypass this, this fault process so we can learn how to create a, a right, right way to create a, 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 a ethic from ourselves. Thank you. Yes, uh, good question. So the open lane tool is meant to be uh, an end-to-end -end flow that you put your design in and you just get the design out. That's like the aim, but things don't always work like that, as we saw for MPW1. But uh, really the best way that you can um, help with that is just to get involved and start making designs, because the more designs we have, the more tests we can do. And when the problems with MPW1 were found, they were fixed in the tool chain. So um, you can use the latest tools that don't have those bugs. Uh, that's the easiest fix. But you can also uh, read the source of the tools and you can make your own fixes and make your own pull requests uh, to the open source tools. And that's one of the great things about the open source tools is that there's a very uh, quick iteration time in getting uh, these bugs fix quickly. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, so we're having actually around three minutes left. So, may, may, uh, I, will, I, will, I would like to ask something that um, Matthew, uh, how is the tiny table adaptive? Uh, how is the adoption rate? Uh, how many? You know, you must be lobbying around the high schools. How many high schools have been already updated the Tiny Tape Out program? Uh, well, Tiny Tape Out is still in a very, um, in the idea phase. So at the moment, I'm explaining the idea to people and presenting it and uh, finding, trying to find collaborators. So I want to work less with schools and more with uh, people above the schools who can say these 10 schools would all be interested. 
Um, so I'm also working with um, academics in university bodies. Um, and there's, there does seem to be a lot of interest, um, but I'm still kind of waiting for the person that can say, um, I am working with making sure that, uh, that schools are teaching uh, relevant technology. Uh, this looks like a great thing and we want to run it across these uh, 30 schools as a trial. And then that will be the, the moment that I will um, kick the design off. Um, either that or for MPW7 for the test, I'll just make it free to participate and we'll see how many people we can get involved just to test it out. Okay, thank you a lot. So I will, uh, because we are having another speaker already here, so I will be mm -hmm. ending this part. But uh, uh, Dr. Lee, I know you must have a lot of questions we'd like to ask with Matthew. So I will hand up from my side, hand up from my side. But uh, you can continue to discuss with Matt if you want, if you like to. So here we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, I will go go to another session. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Danish, Danish, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, just give me one second to adjust my. Uh. Oops. It's kind of messy here because I just switch from <laughs> one side to another. Okay, here we go. Uh, you are you are up and online, and uh, let me. Uh, uh, without further ado, let's in, uh, introduce uh, Dinesh from uh, India, who is uh, working on the pin to pin convertible risk five SLC, which is very, very interesting. And please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ramin. Let me share my. You're able to see my desktop? Yeah, yes, it's very clearly. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. First of all, thanks for, uh, for the invitation. Share my experience on the open source shuttle and one of the project what I'm sharing. So about myself, uh, I have around 20 plus year experience on the VLS design. I have worked a lot on the most of the aspect of RTL to GDS flow from uh, architecture to uh, depot and also I have a lot of experience on the post silicon debug and system like that. In my career I worked for more, most, of, more, more, most of the commercial depots around 180 nanometer to all the way down to 10 nanometer. So I worked in a company uh, like uh, Cypress Semiconductor, Centilium and currently I am working in Intel as a design manager at Intel India. So this let me start my presentation. I thought just thought I'll just give a brief background on what is this open MPW shuttle project what we are discussing. So this is the sponsored by a shuttle which is sponsored by Google and it is managed by an e Fabulous team and the tapers are done in the Skywater uh, foundry which is a 130 nanometer. And if you see the main uh, points are, there are 40 free shuttles are given per shuttles, free slots are available. And currently the way it is running, I see there are 4 shuttles are there per year. This is an approximation I am just saying. The main requirement is to keep the design complete in the open source. Uh, your design you need to keep it in the open source. And uh, the cost of the fabrication, packaging and the five evolution board and shipping it to everything is covered by Google. And in this, uh, when we are, who are for the chance, they are going to get a 50 parts, packaged parts, and five development board, they get it. So if you see the, how the actual uh, design is uh, going to sit within the open shuttle, the caravan, the EFACLIS team has created a uh, one harness where they created their own small PCV uh, core here. If the projects are without any risk core, you need an external way to configure it. You can use their risk key, small risk key is there, which we can use to configure it. And for a user angle, they given a 10 mm square free space. So whatever design you 
we, we develop it is going to fit within that and the, your final integrated chip will be looking uh, like this so it is a 38 pin package and uh, the pins are already frozen but uh, you have a control that uh, they can give in a sub way you can manage this ios and you can control it so this is how what uh, the mpw shuttle project so about uh, my experience uh, wise actually i started on uh, open source shuttle around december 2020 times uh, i think that time exactly the mpw1 which was also already announced on the 2020 december which i was not uh, attempted in any, any of the project on that one so but i started for the mpw2 which was uh, around the june 2021 timeline that effort was planned so since they, they could, because of my sort of experience i don't want to do a small project i thought of taking a basic risk fee based soc design so i thought maybe that's what i should do as i must my first trial so but when i started it was like a, it was a tough ride for me which i thought it will be smooth ride with my experience i thought but uh, when i started uh, run, using the tools i see a lot of issues in the most of mostly in this most of the issues you can see the system were lack limited system were lack support was there in the simulator and I were lack and synthesis so whatever soc design i picked nearly i need to modify nearly 20 to 30 percent of the design to match uh, compile the simulation design in say, able to simulate within the same simulator and synthesis so that was it took my lot of my effort and i done two and two to find out is it my design correctly working and simulator working and some of the places tool was compiling but uh, synthesizing but it is a uh, totally optimizing the design because of some specific system where loss syntaxes so i can say it's, it was a tough way I, to simulate it cross check the simulator is not uh, totally optimizing the design and also uh, since only there were limited complex soc was there only mpw1 was taped out i had very limited references to cross check to flow flow wise and also in the flow wise i found it uh, it was like a totally a lot of uh, a lot of instability was there in MPW2 time. I see each macro to synthesize it, I was, uh, it was, uh, two was breaking in one or the other place. You know, it may be synthesis or clock free and power routing, global routing, one or the other places, uh, tool were breaking. I need to place a bug report on the corresponding tools and uh, those are iterations. So, so it, it was, I can say it's a, it's a lot of effort uh, gone in my first, first step in uh, experience way. And also one of the things what I saw was the, how the tool, the porting, the mechanism they managed. Uh, so the, the concept what they done is, first the, there is an independent, uh, the um, open source community tools are managing independently, the YSC, Cyberla, uh, Magic tools are independently managed by the independent open source community. Those are picked by open OOP team and they were merging it and creating a open lane tools. So one of the main issue was there was open lane team, open road team was picking a version which is somewhat older, like a three to four months, six months older than the main branch. And they are collecting it and creating an open lane. And that open lane once again if it is taking it and creating their own additional patch and releasing it to the open source, our open source shuttle project teams. So whenever there was a bug and when I report into the main source uh, so tools, when they fix it, taking that to throw the flow itself was becoming a big problem because of the additional patches what uh, if the team needs to add. So it was like, because of that, I was faced multiple issues to find out how the tools work, uh, mechanism is there to break it so that I am able to complete my taping activity. So. Overall, so it, these all things took me more than six months to understand how the flows are implemented. But finally, after uh, around six to eight months, I able to clear the, my tape out uh, checklist. And one of the things I observed is during MPW is there was no clear timing closure mechanism. So they were more on the GDS clean database than the timing closure. That's what the stress was there. And even though I raised multiple times, the interest was, there was no less all of us happened around the time push. So this is what was my first experience in uh, the MPW2. 
missed APW3 was around 15th uh, November 2021 time. That time I, since I had some experience from the previous one, I tried a two tapers that time. And this time what I see it is a somewhat better managed in the sense uh, the open road team himself was managing the uh, total tools uh, directly giving. So the additional patches what each address is to do that got uh, removed. So effectively whatever uh, the open community tools were directly can be easily ported. So that reduced a lot of efforts uh, on my side. So whenever I see a new box are fixed in the main tool, porting became a somewhat easy. So, so with that and also because of the, my previous shut, uh, whatever the effort, it helped me to uh, clean up the tape watch activities well within the timeline. And I can say it's a bit uh, smooth ride for me at least compared to MPW2. And, uh, and MPW4 to MPW6, uh, I done around 8 tape ports. So, and I can, I can say it's, it's, it's a bit smooth trade because of the total understanding what I built around the previous uh, tape ports helped me. So, around next uh, 3 MPW, I nearly taped out around 8 shutters. We will go through brief on some of these uh, tape ports, what I have done. This is just to flash what are the tape ports I done in the MPW shutters. So around 8 na yes, recipe based tape ports are done and around 3 non recipe based tape ports are done. And if you see in MPW2 time I attempted only one. In MPW2 three times I attempted two MPW shutters. In MPW4 I tried two. And in MPW3 five I attempted three tape ports. And in MPW6 I attempted the three tape ports. We will go a little bit on each and main project to what is there and uh, what is uh, what I was driving there. So this this is the first project what, uh, what I uh, draw in the MPW shuttle MPW 2 time. And uh, here we basically uh, what I took is uh, I took in uh, Santa Co uh, Risvi 32 bit core and uh, I tried to uh, I build an uh, spoon interconnect and I added a uh, uh, called SPI master to talk to the external flash because there was no in, inbuilt flash was there flash memories are not there in the uh, sky water foundry or foundry whatever libraries they share we don't have any flash memories and also I integrated an SDRAM controller for, for our data and the data memory purpose for the risk to have a data purpose and also I added some peripherals like a UART, I2C master and USB 1.1 host uh, and this was my first MPW2 tapers and uh, in this, this what, in the design wise I made lot of changes in the uh, system verlock logics around this to match to simulator to work within the open open schedule tools. And one of the things I can highlight is that with this whole thing I am the tool set wise I am able to only meet the timing with uh, 50 megahertz only. So, I made a, each block, this main block, this whole block runs in a different block domain against uh, this V core. This V core had its own block domain, but till the finally the current the tool, MPW2 set was able to only meet the design only within 50 megahertz. Only. This was my first attempt uh, what I tried in the MPW2 time. So this is one of the non recipe based taper to what I tried in the open shuttle which is like a which I tried for MBS controller where in MPW2 time there were some SRAMs are uh, developed by the other teams and I took those SRAMs and I built an MBS controller where it is going to test how, how reliably these memories are coming and I wanted to validate my MBS also which is required for my future development so I added the MPS controllers so here basically I put uh, 4 uh, uh, 8 uh, uh, memories I think some are 2 KBs some are 1 KBs I think some type is there here so, so basically I tried an uh, MPS controller with 8 MPS controller and 8 memories and this aim is to just to see my MPS controller and also how this SRAMs works and here I one more important things I taken care is I given a four location 
memory memory repair options are given in this mbis control so that is a feature i wanted to validate in this mbis control so next one is uh, just a upgrade version of the previous mbis controller where i tried a logic bis so the current uh, open shuttle doesn't currently support the scan method there you do, there is no way you can implement a scan and validate your design uh, implemented correctly so i done some hacking in the flow and uh, i built an eight channel scan in scan outs i took the previous mb test this uh, project and added a serial scan ins and created on my own elvis controller where it created the Uh, peer based pattern and uh, transfer a duration and checks that the final signature matches with the border this is just to check how the scan is going to run in that uh, system uh, so this is the project which is one one of the non risky project which i turned in the open shit so now let's come back to our uh, risdi now which is the one which i'm nearly driving or at least i tried nearly i'm trying the eight tables around this architecture so this is uh, this is an uh, 32 bit rsv based soc design where i am trying to target uh, a pin its uh, pin its uh, pins are matching with the arduino platforms so so if you see it, this was a somewhat upgraded version of my first rsv core and i made some little bit changes in design i added a cache like instruction cache and data cache and uh, but tight memory are and i split it the core into uh, three sp- three splits the main control of the risc core i separated out and uh, i build an interconnect so that if i want to add a multiple cores i can connect it and uh, so, so they can they connected the directly through the uh, commonly supported an i cache and d cache for them and they uh, and there is a common architecture created for the wishbone interconnect where individual peripherals can be connected so i connected uh, uh, the quad spa master and uh, two uarts uh, i2c master and uh, usb 1.1 host and sspa and uh, the adc actually i am not at uh, integrated i am looking for some community help to integrate this um, i am more exp- expert in the digital side unlock i need some help so i am intensely monitoring with something in the open source side things i can fill full and add it here so currently adc is the one which is uh, missing in this design and apart from that i added a pin max the aim of the pin max is to match the pins uh, as it in uh, in the arduino so so some of the things wise so one more one more thing i added is i given a uh, booting options so there are three ways you can boot the whole chip you can boot through the caravel has its own uh, wishbone interface you can go through that we can boot the whole chip you can configure it and wake up the risc core so that uh, uh, you can even through this you can configure the external flash and uh, once you uh, program the program it then you can wake up the risc core so the system brings up that things so there is one more mode i given is a uart so uart wise also there is a message handler i built it here you externally if you are connecting through the uh, uart you can go and configure as it comes as a master you can go and even configure the flash i given a standard uh, write uh, and read command for the serial uh, port you can go and configure it even though caravel uh, interface was not working i can go through this and then i can boot the whole system that was the uh, given a backup options here and third option i given is the spa slave so this is uh, something similar to what you see in isp in arduino i made a sim- same pin compatible to isp where where you can uh, through the spa of the isp you can go and configure uh, all the flashes and you can bring up the chip so there are three booting options what i implemented in the uh, as it is not like in the first version i supported in mpw so i can say it's over individual mpw i done some improvement like these are the la- final uh, design what this year and one more thing is uh, one more thing is from mpw 6 onward uh, i am able to meet a timing um, at, at at least at 100 megahertz so previously as i told in the first one the maximum time i am able to close is only 50 megahertz 
but with the tool improvements and some design changes in the pipeline now currently the design is able to meet at 100 megahertz which is i can say is so it could improvement from the the over the setup and uh, one more thing i can say is actually the design wise it is not like a one single clock domain design so i implemented uh, a multi clock domain demand the designs where the risk score has its own clock it has a core so that a timing of risk score is not deciding the rest of the clock domains so system clock has separate clock and this is built with separate clock so so uh, so increment on the risk core can not uh, the timing of the risk core will not be influencing the system core uh, timings so so basically created an hierarchical hierarchical based design so that it is simplifies in back end things nearly most of these blocks are independent hard macro inside the design these are the main high highlight of the project and here just to show it how i am trying to map the uh, resdino with the art, art mega and arduino pins and uh, here the pins uh, which are listed in this uh, white color are from uh, are the resdino pins what i am trying to match with the uh, art mega pins this the rest of the pins are what art mega and uh, Uh, Arduino is having it, and I am trying to match these pins. And uh, wherever the Ds are there, they are digital pins, and unlock the for unlocks. And uh, apart from this, actually, the, uh, the, design, the whatever the whatever uh, the projects given 38 pins, and what I needed was so only 24 bits. 24 bits. Rest of the things, uh, since there is no internal uh, flash and uh, SRAMs, I use them for their external. Uh, SRAM and flash purpose. Until we have an internal flash option, currently I am totally dependent on the external flash to boot the design. But rest of the 24 pins I try to match with the Arduino, Arduino flag. So overall, if you see, currently I am driving three uh, projects in on around the streets, you know. and uh, so i try to create a more uh, some generic concept so that you when you have when you add more cores it will work uh, transparently you see currently the first one this dino x core is a single core uh, uh, arduino where i connected only one risc core and uh, really rest of the cores are nim functions are same and the second one which i am trying is multi core type is a second risc core i brought in here where uh, rest of the interfaces other things are matched uh, but uh, the interconnects uh, has some changes to support the second core here and one more i am supporting is the quad core so uh, currently i am supporting the max up to four core so that is based basically because of the whatever the space free space i have in the open lane shuttle uh, which is uh, 10 mm square currently i am maximum able to fit that four cores that's what these are the three currently i am driving and Most of the time, I am attempting three tapers: one with S cores, a D core, and a quad core. Just to set uh, the, how the physical view is uh, going to look, because uh, normally we will have a doubt uh, when you do an SOC with the 10 mm square, how much space uh, you would have squeezed, whether there is any empty space to add new function, and those questions comes up. So that's the reason I added this uh, my placement view of the each core. just to have a idea how this design how much design is congested or how much free space is there and if you want to add an additional ips uh, so it can is it there is a space is there or not just to highlight it i given this view we see the s core around 30% of the design is free so it is around uh, the total instance is 94k instances are there and 85 in that 81k is the combo logic and 13k is the sequential flop server so it is around 100k instance uh, design i can say and in that i can see i see around 30% design is free that means if, if i have some additional ips uh, where i can go and add it so it is not so congested and i am i am looking as the tools are getting improved so the utilization of the improve it should have it and you should get a more a smaller area it will take for the each ip so you will get some more ips you can plug it so i can see that 10 mm square is a good space to play around to create any good and iot chip 
and uh, just uh, just to see if it's a little bit uh, dense again uh, deep core with still the uh, 15 to 20 percent free space is there <coughs> this is around 120k instance uh, design the core, core core is somewhat congested i can say this only is less than five percent uh, free space is there which i i will reserve kept for an adc here otherwise uh, it's nearly filled space and that is the reason I stopped at a car code because there was no much space left for me to add additional codes. This is I see around 160k instance uh, design. This is just given a brief how this Resdino over the period can help uh, over the Arduino just I try to put my way. See, currently if you see the Arduino there are the uh, fixed memories are there, flash memories. If you want to take any things, you have to bring one more different uh, configurations of the Arduino to build it. Since currently it is an uh, external flash, you can go and uh, add uh, additional flash. And it's up to 64 MB, there is no limit on uh, whatever flash you want to add there. And uh, so if you want to do an add on, add on so you need typically in Arduino cases, you need to bring the new new boards, uh, new new ch uh, chip configuration you need to bring. But here you can design, you can add those configurations into the uh, your original project itself. So that you can get uh, your customized uh, chip which uh, nearly matches like in Arduino means you can even compile in Arduino environment itself. One, one thing I missed in my discussion time was uh, it is not only pin compatible, it is going to run in the Arduino IDE itself. So you can even run the your uh, C code in the Arduino for platform with the package of the Aristino. You can compile it and you can use that in my uh, Aristino project. Uh, currently at least 6 to 8 C code of the Aristino Arduino software I ported already. I am cleaning up one by one the firmware. Hopefully within some time I will have a very clean Arduino platform there. And uh, you see, and some of the Arduino features missing. I can see the, the keyboard. Some of those features are missing. You can go and add those into this SOC. And also, if you want to reduce the design, so Arduino is like it's already hard and correct. But since this is a soft IP for you, these people can use that to reduce some of the IPs which you feel not required. And you can decide what IP is required, and you can go and optimize it. And this is still valid for your power and performance also. You can go and squeeze the design so that you can get a much better uh, controlled design. This is just just my first thought on the Rizdino project when I started. Uh, this is just to show what you see the open source shuttle wise, what are my just going back and uh, just going back and open source shuttle. Just to say what are my pinpoints and what are the issues currently I see in the open source shutter. See one of the main issue I can see is even though tapeouts are happening as per the dates, chip delivery is not happening. So even though I done my first tapeout in June 2021, still I have not received my first tape chip. So it is already running one year back now. Hopefully he published team take it uh, seriously and that. Uh, try to get some chips as early as possible so that our silicon iteration will complete so that uh, the next chip will be comes out in a better, better shape otherwise we are just whatever the uh, issues we are thinking from a verification angle only we are modified we are not getting a silicon data which is uh, I think is the one of the critical thing uh, is missing one more thing I can say is the MPW shuttles are continuously that uh, tool flows are continuously getting changed the projects like us, me, mine, which is uh, uses the previous shuttle to continue. So once again, I need to readjust this flow. So from my angle, if you see, I am looking more from the tool improvement than the flow. I feel flows are somewhat okay. I don't see much changes are required. I am looking for a more in the tool improvement. Um, but currently, I see both are getting into a change. But readjusting them, it's also is a becoming one type of pain. I can see. Third important thing I can see is still some critical functions are missing in the open source shuttle program. Like even though SRAM is there, only only 1 KB and 2 KB, only two type of SRAMs are released for the people to use it. But also not fully qualified. So that is a risk we are carrying. 
and I don't see any flash array from currently available for user to use it. The other thing I can see is the uh, LEC and the scan uh, is still not, those functionals are not integrated. So we have a big, a big risk if you want to be thinking for a commercializing tapeouts, this tapeout can be used for commercial purpose still I think this critical function mixing, I see it's still we, have, we need to use this to say we can use these tapeouts for commercial. And also low power methodology, I don't see any uh, direction how we can go into even low power methodology to reduce the power, plug gating, those things, I, I don't see a clear methodology. Yet. And one more thing which I see is need to directly use my chip into actual any commercial or after any ports, issue I see the Caravel the default harness setup. Because if you see currently already Caravel team have their own recipe code. And I also have one more recipe code. It is like a duplicate recipe code. So that hinders to just to create a proof of concept what you want to create. Then I need to keep, keep two flash, which is uh, which which is somewhat uh, is deviating from a standard board configurations. I think that's one thing I can say is a critical issue what we see from this shit. As a summary, guys. What I can say is it is a great opportunity for the university and researchers uh, from the for the software people since, the, since the, all the tools are open there are plenty of opportunity into it so, so all the source codes are available in the GitHubs people who are having a good idea they can go and use it, improvise it so it's a good opportunity for the, all the idiot uh, software people who, who want to contribute to the open source. And also for the research community in the VLC domain also, they can plan their new chips around new, new ICs around IoT healthcare and automation. Mm, these are the things so what I, I had it for this today presentation. That's all I had it. Thanks a lot for your wonderful experience on sharing this and I'm very, very surprised that you haven't received the MPW2 chips because from my understanding that they should be already sent to their participants. So <laughs> this is kind no, of... MPW1 only they are given. MPW2 they are saying uh, August and days. I see. I see. And I can completely under uh, completely agree with you that the users needs to needs to improve improvements instead of their fancy flow improvements because we are the users of the the, the, the open land and we want you to use it to do our projects just like yours your risk domino which is very inspiring and we want it to work and also the harness SOC from eFabless is kind of restrictive to users I can agree with you that uh, because many people here in Taiwan are actually thinking that maybe we can use the harness uh, use the MPW uh, sponsored MPW shuttle to do their test trips and for tiny or you know the Soho this oh sorry <laughs> the, 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 the screen flickers so I, I was thinking that I was disconnected anyway uh, so many Soho's and many makers are thinking that they will once think that they can use the uh, free shuttle to do their products but this is not the case just as you, just as you say because the harness chip is there and the uh, IO control is very you know not very working <laughs> because uh, from my understanding yeah yeah, yeah the 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 people from and uh, if I remember correctly that some people are complaining that the uh, GPIO control from the harness chip is actually broken yeah, so <laughs> that is very sad. Uh, but one, uh, so regarding your slides, I have one thing we wish to ask. That is, uh, uh, you, you 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 have mentioned that you have many uh, risk five cores. You know, you have the D risk uh, double core risk duno and the three cores unit uh, risk 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 duno and the four cores unit risk duno. So how the the cores interact with with each other. Do you have any kind of uh, mailbox that uh, one core could notify another core that what it what it is doing, or is it just planning uh, use some kind of a uh, polling mechanism to con communicate with, with each other? Currently, that's what hard hardware semaphore way I'm thinking. And I because see. each one, uh, it is. I don't know how to say coin. Uh, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. You can't hear me? Huh? Sorry. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Uh, s sorry, did I say something wrong or? No, no, I'm not able to hear you. I'm able to hear you, but you are not able. Uh, we're having some kind of connection error. So, uh, can I log in? Log in. Okay, so hi, yes, hi, hi. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually, there's, there's. I just want to ask that do you, do you have kind of a mailbox to for your risk five course to connect with with each others on your risk two nil, uh, or is just plainly uh, via the you know memory swapping kind of stuffs. Okay, I see. Thanks a lot for your wonderful project. And do we have any questions on the on the field? No. Okay. So thank you very much, and we wish you a great success in the following MPW shadows. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Huh?我們下一場會有一段時間之後對所以有興趣的話可以可能等下這場會是日本人啦所以也是口音也是比較重一點的如果各位是比較想要跟<笑> 我覺得也跟因為它的ISA是pattern-free有關啦 就是我們的確也是有像有一些open 我就不就就因為那邊有賣我就不講錢公司是什麼然後現在在sci-fi對那他們那這個講法你也放在sci-fi對我們像我們的CTO是那個Young Policy是盡量希望可以enable一些客戶 
那这边就是，这边当然也，如果你要比较好的，那当然要签 NDA。可是就，如果你只是，就是 want to want a taste of the risk fly， 然后 some basics of peripherals such as the interval controllers or stuff like that， is free and open source. You can just take it on from a GitHub. Yep. 看，我后面这一场其实很担心会不会会不会黄掉，因为其实他很最后才敲定，然后他当时又有，因为他其实有些 slice 是他的 partner 的的 property， 然后他就来回 check 了很久，还说他可以讲，可是后来他 email response 又不是非常的 responsive， <笑>可是我就已经，反正我就我是打算说，就是他如果真的不行啊，因为反正我后面那一场我。我我是有诚实足的把握，我后面那一场其实他讲者是做 A P J 开发版的，那他他很他他跟我很熟，所以我可以很自由调用他的时间，对，对，就是日本往后面这是最后一场，那那是讲那个 Open Source A P J Board 的 Design， 比较偏那种 P C B Design， 就是我们这边也叫 Force Enable h a r d w a r Project， 毕竟再怎么样讲也不是就是 Sci-Fi 成果发表会这样，对，所以我们一定是会要尽量。各 diversity 的这种 topic 都 include 进来，包含包含 PCB 的 design， 对，就大概是会是这个状况。这场接下来应该是三十五分，对，可是，对，你们先忙，你们先忙，对我我我今天有可能会黄掉了啊。其实我觉得你们如果真的有想听的 topic， 先去听他旁边的 topic， 对，就这个我现在到现在那个日本人还没进来，我不知道什么状况，对吧？那个刚才那个。就是对那个，我会找他，我会找他，哎、欸，稍微，欸、对他讲的很好，对对对。所以他从设计到到 PC， 对啊，我原本之前看那个 Open Day， 但是我还没下手。我听到 notification， 我有点害怕，我先我要先处理一点事情，不好意思。呃，这可能他先先让我，对不起，我我我我我有我有我有我有,我有那个 business card， 就是我我我零钱也 OK， 可是对不起，我现在这边我现在这边真的有点手忙脚乱，我我那个 business card 在这边，真的不好意思，我先处理一下那个，就对。那 Respect Pi Four 就看 Respect Pi Four Model B 也是通过 System Ready IR 认证的。不止不止如此，其实 Respect Pi Four Model B 也通过了 System Ready ES 的认证，也就是说它支援支援 ACPI 的。这个我们晚一点再谈。嗯，好，帮我下一张。好，那各位在买板的时候要注意一下 ，System Ready IR 目前是有分成
，没事，抱歉，我刚因为因为我我刚我我现在两鬼，所以我现在手上有点有点乱，对。还还没，对，可是他，反正我我最后一场那个时间非常非常的 free， 我跟我跟最后就我这我这一轨最后一场，我跟他讲说我我会需要非常 flexible 的搬动他的 session，、okay. 然后他，如果如果真的真的有问题的话，那就没有他他他只能延后了，没办法提前。是哪里啦？这样恐怖哦、喔！一直听到 notification， 那东西不知道在哪里，靠腰。东西到底，东西到底哪里在喷那个 notification？ 他什么？三十五分，现在这场就是。其实本来没出现，对。嗯、刷赛，真真的没有啊！我真真的没出现，不知道什么状况。他我我我是跟，因为当初其实谈的很临时，所以我连他的 connect， 就是我甚至连他的，就我只有他 email， 对我没有他的任何其他的联系手段。那我现在非常的囧。但他是有改过一次时间啦，所以他如果真的，如果他完全是，我先，对我，对，就，就如果，就如果刚刚有跟在场有些人讲，如果比较想听，就是比较，就是比较比较口音，比较没什么问题的，何必有一场？
有联络到他了，可是他说他为了三印，可是我现在呃看看三印什么状况。Hey, Kawasaki. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry for the the <laughs> the, the. I know the the, the arrangement has been kept ch changing, and I'm very very sorry. My sincere apology to all the inconvenience. Oh, that's no problem. So, um, are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah, we have plenty of. Uh, let me show you around. <laughs> yeah, okay. our audiences, and they are very eager to know from your your experience and also the race fight Tokyo days. They are very excited to know things about it. Okay, thanks. So let's see how that goes. How that goes? Let's see. All right. Um. Mm, yeah, this is it. So, do I uh, have I share the sc screen? Yeah, it's up and running, very clear. And okay, so, great. Okay, you you can you can you can just uh, start your session, and uh, without further ado, let's uh, give a big hands to the speaker. Okay, thanks. Um, my name is uh, Shunpei Kawasaki. I, sh I show up on, as a, the second author because this is about the, the chip de development. And um, I'm titling this uh, presentation Marmot RISC V SOC Leveraging Open Source ISA IP Process Development Kit and the EDA Tools. And then I collaborated on this uh, like effort with at the University of Electro Electrocommunications. So um, today's agenda is like I'll have a short introduction about lightweight IoT to, that we did in 2016. And then now we are working on the bridge structural health monitoring IoT. And then we talk about some, some little things about the how hardware security and like remote IoT authenticity proof and uh, open source software security such as root of trust chip integration over the S of the update and uh, open source Marmot risk file SOC finally and then future directions and summary. So um, SH Consulting has been around since 2013 and then uh, we also have this subsidiary in, t in Vietnam uh, 2014 and we have been um, in our prior life we did the SH flash MCU chips, embedded software and hardware and development tools, video games, Java card, secure MCU firmware, and FIPS part 140 certification. So we did, since like 2013, we started out a ultra lightweight IoT, and which actually only weighed at 180 grams. And then no one else actually pursued this like lightweight IoT side so when the volcano activity started in um, Kyushu Island, uh, we had um, top share for a very short period of time for drone, drone transported, transported I, IoT. And in 2008-19, we decided to just actually increase further that application market size to capture this infrastructure IoT for structural health monitoring to be applied to bridge. And in the meanwhile, we did all sorts of things like designing consumer equipment, motor control, and an automotive ECU. But I think what happened was that the IoT survived. So 
that in 2018, suddenly, like, that the Sakurajima just erupted. And uh, suddenly, like, that the, they needed the drone to just actually host up the host uh, IoT to a very dangerous area where sulfuric acid gases around. And then in it, like, that we used that uh, wireless IoT. And in the 2013, we have been always trying to just actually do that, like implement um, risk five. And uh, we finally were able to do it by um, having one of our guys just actually started as a PhD student and then used that academic um, fan. And then this is um, based upon Rome. 0.18 micrometer. And then we use that the same exact rocket um, SOC generator to generate this chip. And it is like that uh, 5 meter by 5 meter, 180 nanometer long shuttle with a fairly reasonable amount of 64 bit architecture. R R V64 on uh, GC. And <clears throat> but in the meanwhile, that uh, this whole Mammoth IoT system has been uh, developed. Oh, and uh, this figure shows an example. And essentially, what it, this does is like it doesn't have any cable connection, uh, everything is done by the, the wireless. And, and, uh, Mr. Essentially, Cohen. that's Hi, yes. Mrs. Rose, I'm so sorry to interrupt, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, showing your slides or because your slides freeze at the very first page. Oh. So I'm wondering, so I was, I was thinking that, oh, it's a very long intro, but I was, I was thinking, no, you're referring to some pictures. So I'm thinking that, right. <laughs> that's that's not, that, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Sorry for interrupt. And I, 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 the new slide now? Yeah, I can, I can see the, the, sc uh, the scroll into your slide. Uh, we are now on uh, slide s seven. Uh, now it's eight. Okay, that's good. So j I'll just actually use use the, the slide like this um, rather than using that. Uh, uh, the presentation. I see. I see. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I will I will share around your slides after the talk, and we'll keep going okay. here from here. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. So, like back back to the, the chip topic. This is the uh, chip that we did in 2019 using academic shuttle. But the only problem with that academic shuttle is we can't carry this chip outside of that uh, campus because, of course, you know, like once you build a chip, you have to just integrate it in, into the board and then just actually see, and then the software integrations and so forth. But um, so a restriction by that the two companies didn't allow that to happen. So what happened was essentially um, we um, had a very good experience, but then we just actually um, started back to this board system, I mean, system development, which is which we call Mammoth system. And um, so the way that it works is like that you just put on a different part of that the bridge um, things like gateway and an endpoint. And then typically like that you use like multiple endpoints for like that the gateway. And then every sensor that, um, and then actuator that shows up in the, um, this type of setting is all connected to um, by wireless. And what it does is essentially, you know, there's a dis displacement that the bridge causes. And then over the season, you know, like it displaces and every day because of the temperature dis displacement changes. And then you capture and then monitor and then somehow you are able to figure out what kind of a structural health that the bridge span has. Actually, this is like more like the know-how of that, uh, the companies that are using those type of IOTs. So the type of um, application 
needs is like long term no maintenance, like five years of like usage, left as is. And of course, it has to be harvest its own energy, um, solar energy and uh, lithium batteries. But, you know, like since it doesn't have any kind of cable whatsoever, the installation, installation is very cheap because you only have to just nail down those devices and then program. And uh, also, obviously, like that, uh, you would like to have that over the air software upgrade from the remote location. Also, um, obviously, uh, because this is like regional government and then they don't have a whole lot of money. Um, but first of all, that, like, there are like 700,000 bridges in Japan and then about 90% of them are just owned by municipalities rather than the central government. And they don't have a whole lot of budget to just actually burn on that uh, monitoring bridges and then decaying infrastructure. So this is more like very unattractive um, marketing. But yet, um, you know, like it moves, moves slow enough that uh, we can catch up as a small company. But anyway, so using the consumer grade components for low cost is like one of the uh, requirements. And uh, also system security against hacking. If um, all those like, like, a, like a boxes are just hacked by someone else, it's gonna be all sorts of sad, um, you know, like incident. So therefore that we didn't um, really <coughs> want to have that happen. And uh, um, another thing is, so this is like the set, very, like looking very cheap using that uh, off the shelf boxes. But it has got the gateway master, slave endpoint, and sensor and actuary. And then suddenly we, we move into this uh, like risk five thing. So as, as we are using like risk five IP as, as a chip for this uh, system and then um, the, the, the type of like risk file that we're going to be using is at the bottom here like 32 bit chip that has got Altos on it. Over the years that we have uh, developed both like Linux IoT and then Altos IoT and then it, we found out that Linux IoT in the end of the day it you know, consumes like five minimum five and then in some cases 50 watts of power. In com compared to that, uh, like Altos IoT can actually run some tasks on 50 milliwatts to 180 milliwatts. Because like that, uh, the memory is a thousand times bigger in the Linux IoT compared to Altos. Anyway, so we did the demo in 2019 using like the Tandes board on the RISC-V, integrating that the secure element and then we, we started use, doing more and more of like the uh, um, things like OTA integration into RISC-V. And then <clears throat> uh, finally, um, we came up with this notion that there was the free autos RISC-V porting in 2021 that you do need relatively large flash memory and RAM in order to run this free autos um, secure connection to a a t AWS using um, root of trust chip and then OTA uh, software upgrade. So uh, we decided that maybe we're going to develop our own risk file that actually has um, supports that the larger memory, which is um, necessary for um, um, various IoT functions like OTA and secure chip integration. So <clears throat> um, in February of 2022, a decision was made to participate in multi-project Wayflow 5 that Google offers. And then February 26, we decided to create a bunch of wish lists. 
And we find this wish list very important because a lot of times, like Zen's, you know, like that the beginners has got more perception than experts. And uh, so we, we have this like initial thoughts, very important because later on you go back and then fix the project, you know, you use this like wish list. So even though that the engineering wise that the wish list hardly means anything, but it actually helps later to go back to what you initially intended. But anyway, in March 16th, rocket SOC generation and logic simulation was complete. Uh, by the way, we are using this on Google's like Google and then DAPA's open road um, chip flow, chip design flow. And um, March 16th, we were able to finish the uh, logic simulation. And the open, lo open logic synthesis job threw an error in the middle. And the reason was, obviously, um, the error was caused by memory deprivation of the PC. So we uh, went out to Akihabara and bought two Intel Mac Mini and then upgraded it to 64K byte, gigabyte RAM. And in March 19th, open lane synthesis completed somehow. Message shows that the tool consumed 35 gigabytes of memory. Due to the scale of logic, the rocket's SOC generator outputs 200 k bytes of logic, two gates of logic, and then an excess of 35 gigabytes of RAM, and then three hours were consumed in order to do this routing. An additional iteration was made to address the whole violations, and each took three hours. Each run took three hours. Open run RAM layout through tons of DCR, DRC errors. And then on March 20th, Slack, open, slash open main, and then GitHub issue community is often. Hey. Uh, sorry, uh, Kawasaki-san. Kawa uh, we're, we're we're having trouble to hear from you. Uh, let me check if I can. Uh, I I will. I will I will leave the session for just a minute to rejoin the the session to see if we can sort this audio problem. Can you hear me? Eh? Oh, so sorry. Uh, um, um, l l let me just uh, hang in here. I uh, will be sharing. I uh, will be doing some quick uh, debugging. I, I can see. I can see that your your voice is coming in actually, but uh, it's probably from my end. So I, I will be keep uh, talking, and I will be keep. Uh, Let me see if I can do anything to just... Uh, Kawasaki-san? Uh, I'm thinking that maybe, I, uh, can you use the Skype? Uh, I, 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 I will uh, go, go to another machine to use Skype to talk with... Uh.
Hello, hello. Uh, so uh, maybe we can use uh, this kind of uh, hybrid solution that uh, the the, no the 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 voice will come from the Skype, but you can use the Google Meet to share the presentation. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Then that then we'll do it. Uh, can, can you uh, you can you know, keep go uh, keep on going your your slides, please. Yeah, I can, I can see your slides okay. okay. So what happened is like we were playing with uh, this uh, free shop. And um, but in uh, March 27, we finally had a trial and error and a lot of help from the way we created the GPS. The design has to be broken to check and play for that play. We dealt with five, so we had to be with six. Three months later. So, what happened is um, we have um, worked on that, we regrouped and then decided to design. And then decided to write Chisel for like a QPIPS RAM interface mapped to CPU address space. So, original Sci 5 IP has, can map flash to that uh, CPU address space, but not PS RAM. So we had on May 2nd that we had to pay, you know, like to get the PS RAM model from like to simulate the QPI interface. Obtain the model of IOTD RAM, a fancy name for PS RAM with the QPI. The model provided contained ex encrypted very long. So the designer had to move from Icarus very long to model sim Questa to run simulation. And finally, main 29 leverage sci leveraging Sci 5 E300 chisel code with the original specification. We modified 400 lines of chisel. The engineer only needed to correct the logical description part and then was able to create the SPI interface and map PS RAM to memory. Synthesis and layout was repeated due to the fact that RAM is at the top of 100 lines of very long. Again, had to be manually modified, and in June, second project was modified. So essentially, like that, we use this eFabless Calvo asset, which actually does have a lot of functions to assist you and then create the sandbox. And then we still have many questions. Like, you probably are very interested in asking questions like Chisel versus Verilo. You know, like how Chisel performs compared to Verilo, for instance. And uh, um, also, you probably want to ask things like, how does how does that open road? open source EDA tool chain performs against commercial EDA. And uh, also external memory um, power simulation. Can you do power simulation? What are, we, what are we gonna do about um, MPW7? But anyway, these are the many of the questions that we still haven't answered. But anyway, uh, one thing that is good is we can evaluate the chip once it's back. So um, for every SOC, we need an evaluation plan. The best way to do it is build the chip in the system and give some role. This, in this specific instance, we gave a current monitoring task to Marmot. Current monitoring. I mean, power current monitoring task to Marmot. Once we receive a chip, we build our SOC into the system. And here's that uh, Mammoth Power Supply Board that actually has got the six power rails and then current measurement output for six 3.3 volt the power rails. And uh, we are able to just actually measure current of that, the various parts of the system like this. Also, 
another interesting thing is, particularly like a network Wi-Fi processors, there's no way to check the packets. So the only way that if it is doing okay or if it's not corrupted by malware is to evaluate that the power waveform. And then this is that the one area that we are working to just actually figure out what we can do with this type of stuff. And um, um, <clears throat> this is where that I have where the original data. So like the, the Caravel GitHub, you, you know, like that the Sci Five Z Five E three ten, and then you have Open RAM Chipyard, and then there's a bunch of other things. So okay, I'll summarize that the presentation. Essentially. Um, Artus consumes less power than Linux, so suitable for energy harvesting IoT. And then another thing is, like as in, the, in, in the, our working, we found out that the root of trust chip integration and security firmware upgrade takes more memories than we anticipated. And then number three, measuring chip current is a useful practice might be able to detect malware and then hardware implant or cloning of that the system. Number four is we design the custom IP to give the SOC megabytes of flash and RAM map to CPU memory space so that aforementioned memories are actually being supplied. So we leveraged Rocket Open Source IP Sky 130 open source PDK and the open lane open source EDA tool. And of course, before all that, Risk 5 open architecture. So we pretty much, of course, free so free Artos is also open source. Yes, everything is pretty much open source. And we plan to continue SLC efforts on the, the MPW7. So I have to acknowledge that this result was obtained as a result of secure open architecture fundamental technology and its AI age applied research and development commissioned by New Energy and then Industrial Technology Development Organization. So that's pretty much my presentation. And uh, if you have any question, I should be able to answer. Thank you very Thank much, Kawasaki. So very thank, thank, thank you very much. And uh, personally, I have a question that uh, there are many open source uh, RISC five SOCs and uh, cores. So why did you pick uh, the Rocket E thirty one instead of others? Is there a particular reason for for choosing the E thirty one? So what happens is like that. Uh, it's very rare that. You know, E3310, like G003, is just being productized and being sold as a chip. And then its IP is actually also open source. That's very rare, I think. So, um, one, you know, like the, the, all the peripheral functions and then everything seems to be working okay because we have been using this platform for like the last three years in, in addition to like a and this platform for risk five and then uh, we, do, we do know that IPs are reliable that's the reason that I you uh, use that uh, um, rocket IP I if see. that has answer the question yeah that's very clear and I'm, I'm so so inspired as well uh, do, so I will be asking the people here if they have any questions uh, Okay, so most of them are, are <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of hot in Taiwan now, so people are feeling dizzy, and so I will be, I will do the asking. Uh, so uh, I'm quite wondering that, uh, do you have encounter any kinds of, uh, you know, hiccups on using the open LAN because it is very, it is still in the early stage of the development, and from my understanding that uh, many, uh, you know, the 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 check the, the analysis and checks from the commercial tools are not supported in OpenLAN. So, is there any any 
arrows or bugs you have encountered and you and you think is very worth sharing with us? So what happens is like. The um, as far as I can see, we didn't even see a single DRC error on standard cell. So on open, I mean Skype 130 open road, and um, therefore that the standard cell is very well, well much, very mature, and then all those DRC and the LVS is okay. But on the open RAM, I think it's. I guess that the DRC and the LVS is not mature yet. But it is maturing very quickly because nobody has used the huge like RAM before, but in the, like maybe last half a year, everybody is starting to use huge open RAM. So I think it's going to be okay as we, as time goes on. I see. And yeah, thanks very much because uh, uh, a bunch of people I know have tried to use Open RAN on their own, and the Open RAN is quite broken for their design. So, if thanks for pointing that out, I, we will be very looking forward to the improvements on Open RAN and also on the. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, may, may, let me rephrase it a bit. Will there be a, gen, a generation two of Marmot SOC, or it, this will be the last one? Uh, pardon me. Oh, sorry. Uh, it will will there be another generation of the M uh, Marmot the SOC you you have designed? Will there be a generation two? So uh, I guess uh, for us, for us, I think we are planning to just actually run another run, or oh, another generation of Risk Five, and then if possible, we would like to do that the SH two too. I mean, uh, open source some of those like IPs that we have been developing for last years. And uh, if that, is that the am I answering your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. That would I, I, I was asking a very weird question. So thank you for clearing things up and I understand c clearly. So uh, do we have uh, questions here? Nope. Uh, one last question from my end. Uh, I'm I'm curious that uh, because you're in collaboration with the UEC, which is the Denki uh, Daigaku, I I think I I'm pronouncing it right. So mm -hmm. is are they trying to uh, engage with the risk five community more, or this is just a an, another one shot program? No, I think that the uh, um, UEC has been very advanced. It has been doing like very. Uh, how should I say ambitious plan like uh, implementation of risk five and in the past and then uh, separate from us and then together with us so so you know they are really into this risk five right now so yeah thank you very much and yes. thanks for joining us in such, such a short notice. I'm very, very, very sorry, and I'm very happy to have you here. So I think that will be the end, and arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. So I'll sign off, thanks. Oh. <laughs> <笑>我離下一場還有多遠<笑> 三点零我超时而且已经开始了吧已经开始了 Hello, I'm from Korea.
Operations Park, and here I will represent my makerspace Rabiola and company Intergalactic. First, I just want to thank organizers for accepting my talk and allowing me longer presentation. I will also want to thank Open Source Community for supporting us from the start. In this presentation, I will talk about open source hardware, especially about the FPGA ports, ULX 3S and ULX 4M. So let's get started. Just a little bit about me. I spent most of my working time, around 15 years, on repairs, starting from IT equipment and ending on banking equipment repair. So I was quite familiar how devices look like from inside and how components are interconnected. That experience took me to the next level of designing and programming industrial IoT devices, mostly different types of smart meters. After that, me, Deborah and Damek from Adiora opened a company called Intergalactic that is focused on open source solutions. I'm a member of Adiora for around 10 years. It is a really great place for expanding creativity, to meet people that think on a different way to hang out and do collaboration projects with others. In the Ramona, there is a lot of members from different fields and different skills, like electronics, arts, design. Combining those skills and collaborating, we are creating really interesting future. As this presentation will be most talk about FPGAs, let me try to oversimplify about FPGAs. So if I have one sentence to describe what FPGA is, I will say something like this. If you can imagine a really big number of programmable switches placed inside the devices, by programming those switches to be on or off, you can get any digital logic. And after, after some time, you will spend in writing AGDL. AGDL is hardware description language. You will notice that it is really similar by like putting chips on the breadboard and connecting them with wires. So we click AGDL. You are not programming like on MCU, you are describing how hardware will look like. And now just a bit of history about ULX3S. ULX3S was developed in 216 as a name of improvement on the of ULX2S that was used in the faculty of electronic engineering in Zara. Dado and Marco agreed on the features every student would need for learning digital logic and Dado started hardware development. At that time, I was just helping them with some ideas. Unix 2S design part is designed by Mike Marcos X is looking like this. Design was not available at all and the production company that did production for, for a university lost designs files at some point. So Marco and Dava agreed that the only solution for a new board is to be open from start, with design files available for everyone. On the ULX 3S, they decided to go with the Lattice ACP5 FPGA chip. Dava put a lot of effort to make board compatible with different ACP5 sizes. On ULX 3S, we can use 12F, 45F, 85F, and with small correction on one power supply, we can also use UM and UM 5G devices. We have discovered that 12F is enough for most of the project, but most sellable device is still 85F. Second part of ULX 3S is SDRAM memory. Maximum memory on ULX 3S can have 60, is 64 megabytes, but we have only one batch with 64 megabytes. All other batches are 34 megabytes, as that is mostly enough. Idea behind SDRAM over DDR memory was some already done projects like Minimic Oberon Max 186 and similar retro projects. At that time, Free FPGA board also had SDRAM, so we wanted to be more compatible. As for the programming, ULX 3S can be programmed over US1, USB connector, that is connected directly to FDDI chip. For programming, we are mostly using Fuiproc, that is form of Marco Z's Fuiproc, but there are also other tools like OpenFPGA Loader. Besides US1 connector, we also have US2 connector that is directly connected to FPGA pins. We can use that connector for USB boot loader, or we can use it as USB host, and has some external devices like keyboard, mouse, or joystick connector. 
just in case some, something goes wrong, word is also programmable over, over JTAG connector. Along with the JTAG connector, on top of it, there is also OLED connector placeholder. For bigger data, we have an SD card. We can use it in SDI mode or 4 bit mode. SD card has shared connections between FPGA and ESP32, so devices can talk with the card, of course, not on the same time. On the board, on the board there are also 8 LEDs. 8 was a great number, as we did. We can represent full byte. On FPGA designs, LEDs are an easy way of debugging some internal signals. So you, so you will always need more LEDs. There is no fancy step-by-step -step debugging in FPGA. But you can always assign some signals to LED and check what is happening here. As for the outputs, we also have GPDI, General Purpose Differential Interface that we are mostly using for outputting DVI video signals. HDI monitor, HDMI monitors are mostly compa compatible with DVI signaling, so you can get picture on most monitors or televisions. Next connector can be used for audio or video output. For audio, we are using simple 4-bit resistor divider. On the board, we have seven buttons that are organized like a joystick. So we can play retro games directly on those buttons. Only one button, button zero, has inverted logic and we are mostly using that button for reset. That button can also be used for a powering board on and off. And if one dial is added to the board, we can use that button as a multi-boot jump. So we can jump to our next bit stream in flash. As an input, we also have four deep switches, as, as, as switches are really always useful. Last thing on the top side is a small ADC. It is 12-bit ADC that can have eight, eight single-ended inputs or four differential inputs. Idea behind adding ADC was from Arduino, as users always want to add some external analog devices or just have the potential. On the top, on the bottom side, we have three power supplies. We are using Texas Instrument chip that can provide up to two amps of current. If we are placed UM or UM 4G chip, we just need to change one resistor to get 1.2 volts instead of standard 1.2. It can also be used for overclocking. This is just a FPDI chip that is used for FPGA programming but also as a USB to serial interface to FPGA logic. In new version, we have switched to QFM version of the same chip. As FPGA starts, it always starts empty and depending on settings, check for, checks for the bitstream. In our case, bitstream can be placed in flash. In flash, we have 64 megabytes of flash, so something, sometimes we are also using it for other purposes like holding ROM games. One of, one of the special features of the ULX3S is FTC chip that has small memory that can hold alarm. So we can use this setup to have FTC in, for example, Linux, but the design is also made in a way that FTC can provide big alarm for, for the board. Board can be powered down and on alarm it can wake up. While in power down mode it only consumes 10 microamps. Battery is only to keep FTC time. So you will need you will still need to provide five volts for the board. Last thing on the back of the board is ESP32. And as the designs of ESP32 changes, we have a good footprint design that in that way so it can hold rover or ROM modules of versions of ESP32. ESP32 arises with, with preloaded MicroPython and combining the external MCU and FPGAs gives endless possibilities. One of the cool uses of ESP32 is having OSD overlay on the top of the FPGA picture. So in retro games we can browse SD card and load game, game ROM on the fly. ESP32 also gives this board wireless and Bluetooth, so we can connect to external, external network or we can use Bluetooth for different things. 
Once I was using USB to to connect to external external Bluetooth speaker, so I had uh, I had FPGA sound core playing sound on external Bluetooth speaker. And how and here is how current version of the board looks like. A few more things I didn't mention. Oscillator on the board is 25 megahertz. Why? Maybe this value is not so important. And you can use as you can use internal PLL to get almost any clock value. We have three more LEDs that are used for serial connection and ESP32 identification. On each side we have 40 pins that are arranged in a way to be pinmod compatible. Out of 56 pins on header, 28 are differential pairs. Small f connector is here so we can call ESP32 in reset just in case it takes over the SD card and G5 can be used to switch left bands voltage to 2.5 volts or we can provide other small external voltages like 1.8 volt if needed. On the top right side of the header there is also 5 volt input output so you can provide 5 volt over that connector or use USB and have 5 volt out for external peripheral devices. Just a quick overview of the front side of the board and the back side of the board. Campaign of the ULG board was quite successful and until now we have sold and delivered around 2,000 2, boards. Those are really those are real high numbers for a small startup like this. There is only other things I did not mention about this board, so I will show you a campaign video that is showing a lot of interesting projects that are running on this board. Enjoy two minute video while I am having a sip of water. Yes, will never be so popular if offer open tools are not available. So our, our big thanks goes to your HGU team. 
that is making enormous effort in providing open and available tooling chain. Thank you, your safety. So after campaign, we could not sell that amount of work over our maker space. So we have decided to open a company that will handle everything around your experience and be focused on new open source hardware software solutions. We named the company Intergal. Once the world was produced, we, had, we, we needed to have some batch testing. We already had internal tests that was good for checking if work is okay. But when you have thousand boards at once, you need some scripting. Dominic Zapalonis has helped us on this first batch and made our awesome batch script testing. Batch script was great when I was doing it, but once I switched testing, to a production company, they were quite lost with those scripts. So I had asked Envox if they can help us. A month later, I got this fancy GUI tester that any production company can understand. There is a bunch of UXPS examples out there. So we have created, let's call it startup page, that we are refreshing from time to time to include every project we found. And what GitHub is also full of your experience with this. So make sure you check missed examples that are covering all board peripherals. We have also designed a lot of open, open extensions for the new experience. And we are currently selling three of them. First is a USB extension that gives you two additional USB, USB host ports as, as, some projects you will need, as for some projects you will need mouse and keyboard. Or even just GPDI can be used for additional GPDI output. It can also be used as DVI input. We have samples of getting 640 by 480 input, but it may need a bit more work as timings is not automated. So you need to find adjust timings with the balance to get stable picture. With high resolutions also work, but it is harder to get timings right and high resolutions can have more, more noise. The last extension we are selling is for OV camera. You can use it, you can use up to two extensions of one real SDS board. Check other extensions, extensions on my GitHub account. As for our availability of ULXDS and extension boards, you can check Crowd Supply, Mouser or Android site. Or you can contact me directly. I have already mentioned Emos. They have great they have great open source projects. So at some point we decided to collaborate and combine BB3 measuring equipment with ULXPS. We, we did manage to do it, but it was painful to combine EZ MCU board and ULXPS, as any Emox boards was done in Eagle. And ULXPS designs are in Kika. After adding FPGA to Emox projects, others started to ask the same. So I was thinking why not make a ULXTS modular? So everyone can easily put a connector and have FPGA in the system. ULXTS has, to, has too many components for that, and it was big to big for integration. So I have asked an online foundation will they help me making modular version of the board? And they accepted my offer. So they are financing development of two modular ports. As making connected fit is not easy, we are also decided to have 3D models first. And Enolent also agreed on financing 3D modeling and experimenting with Blender. All 3D work is done by Power Launcher, also a developer. And here are some pictures from the Blender. Power also need to use Rika at some point, as there is no easy way of importing geometry, geometry into Blender. You can read more about the Blender progress at intergalactic.eu under news, as we are trying to record our progress in the blog. We have tested different connectors, but at the end we got to a conclusion that connector that is used on Raspberry CM4 model is good enough for everything our border our, our offer. It is also available and cheap. 
And once we have selected that connector, we go to conclusion, we go to a conclusion that we can also be being compatible with CM4 IO. As with, as with compatibility, we will get a big range already existing CM IO base works. So our first board was SD RAM and on V02 we managed to squeeze two buttons and four LEDs. Additional to UNXPS, UNX4M will all offer usage of service pin and LED CSI and VSI. On DDR3 prototype we managed to add one more button and added four more LEDs, as they are so, so important in the bag. Also, this version has two deep switches, and most important, we have added two. We have added USB connector, so we can use this board even without baseboard. For that purpose, we will just need to use the USB bootloader, as USB pins are connected directly to the FPGA. DDR3 board also has place for the one gigabit Ethernet chip. Everything is connected, but we are currently unable to find that chip. So we will need to redesign or wait a bit longer until the chip becomes available. In the way, next revision and the version of the board will also have everything that DDR3 board now has. UX4M is now 6 level. There are 3 signal waves, 2 ground planes, and 1 power play level. As I have already mentioned, board are fully open. And you can check design at the intergalactic video. As for compatibility, for the moment we have released the first version of the board. We are getting and buying lots of already designed IO boards and fixing compatibility issues if they arise. The latest thing we have received is this awesome open hardware tablet that usually holds handy CM4 model. But it can also fit UNX 4M. Currently, we still do not have any sample of driving BP screen, but hopefully, at some, at some point, we will manage to get something on the screen. So, we will give a shout out. This is a QTPI, it is from Taiwan. There was a Canonical employee called Pank. And now, he is in the QT, which is the QT QT. 包含他自己很喜歡做他甚至還抬我去接過那個電影道具的製作有點像那個我不知道各位有沒有看那個有人中介者有一個那個最近過世的那位那個就很像那種感覺那其中這台QTPI是他打造然後我跟就我當過中當
Thank you. So if you need something, you can contact me on the Jitter or Discord. You can follow up Radiona or Intergalactic EU on the Twitter. And yes, you can send an email on warp at intergalactic.eu. And thank you. Oh. 基本上就是这位讲者是一个很有，我发现因为就最后一场让我稍微打晒一下。这位是我其实我还在念大学吧，大四那年的时候，他们做他如果他讲他是克罗埃西亚的首府的那个叫萨格列布大学，那他们其实是一个有点类似像算社团这一类的感觉，就是一群其实。因为其实不像台湾人，其实这种就是很很多你十八岁上个大学这件事情其实很稀松平常。可是，在其实很多国家，其实他们上大学这件事情其实是非常非常耗费、所费不赀的。他可能要去国外工作几年，或者念书。对，所以他们其实这些虽然讲是学生社团，可是年纪都不见得比我们就是十八岁，然后有些可能三十几岁，我去念大学这样。对，那他们在念大学的时候就觉得，因为像台湾这种，你可以很轻易的说上网，然后什么易贝，然后 PJ 就买过来，这其实是很。在国外，尤其是东欧国家，看起来就觉得很莫名其妙的事。那东欧国家，他们那个其实你，就像最近就就在打仗了嘛，就是那其实是一个，就是其实资源不丰，他们就会想说，那我要自己能不能自己做个 A P P 开发版？然后，其实他们也不见得有经费可以去买 s i l e n x 的。那个时候，三那个年代 s i l e n x 还没有 Webpack， 那个年代 s i l e n x 啊，然后 Terra 这种都是要。配的那个 EDA 拖圈，所以他们找了一 d Open Source EDA 拖圈，然后自己去勒 PCB 版，然后最后做一张 APP 开发版出来。然后那时候我还在念大学，我写信跟他讲说：“哎、欸，我觉得好有趣，我想要玩一张。”然后那时候那时候还没有，那时候 PayPal 好像很他他他的国家很麻烦。然后最后我还是去银行去办那个 Wire Transfer， 去把钱给他，就连 PayPal 他都不见得能够收。那我们这种千千几百块把那张板子搞过来之后，然后就开始就也是学，就是因为那时候其实在念大学念书的电路，然后就就开始在玩一些那种。那个时候还没有 risk， 那时候叫 open risk， 是另外一种 architecture， 一个很小的 risk。呃，那其实白算盘有个 DEX 的架构，然后拿去改的叫 open risk 这样。然后那时候开始玩说啊 ，Linux 可以布起来，然后可以 porting 这样棒棒这样。Anyway， 然后后来就他到现在是出到第四代，他刚刚有讲他从 U X 二 S， 然后三 S， 然后现在四 M。就他其实做到第四代的 APP 版，然后也是认识很久的老朋友。所以我刚刚讲说，他后来他刚刚就讲一讲说，嗯，我觉得你要挪我时间可以啦，可是我实在后面有事情啊，不然我送个音，我说 video 丢给你，你自己播这样，所以就变成这样了。这、就是最后，因为刚刚那位你也刚各位在这在座都知道，那个日本讲者那一段那个实在变动太大，就超出了一个常态的 range， 就变成这样了，对，对。蛮有趣的，我就觉得，呃，我最后就做个，就这个 track 最后的总结，就是我们虽然说我自己本身也是一间 C P Y P 公司，但其实，在业余时间也好，就业时间也好，其实都有很多这种 open hardware 的 track 跟 community， 在台湾可能没有那么红，那就是在国外其实蛮多的。那也就是如果你想玩 open source 的，不管 E D A 是给 P G 还是给 A C C， 你都听到了。那甚至连 P C B 版它用 Key Cat， 它是在一个就是随时旁边可能都会爆发战争的国家，它去弄了个 P C B 版出来，为了他们自己的。就是学习跟就是玩，就讲玩乐也是一部分，然后做这样的东西。其实我觉得台湾人要玩这个也很简，也不难。对，那很感谢各位今天陪伴我们这个学到最后，小弟二十一鞠躬，谢谢谢谢。好、哦，感谢感谢，那我就把直播也切了。啊<笑>、呃
一人低十人，就是从是是是牺牲收费到他替我全部全部都全部一个一手包一手包那种大神，现在都在做风险。OK， 就是因为。就这边其实就是开始要就普通普通负责，原本原料第一次没有打完场战争，其实考不好年底就要打 P O 了。是是。然后现在打完，现在自从他就要 P O 个 P。对啊。对，所以就其实他们为了要开始冲一些 revenue， 其实就很多那种比较卡牛员就开始开始变变少。是。对，那可是就我觉得看人的选择啊，我个人就觉得就是我我今年三十几，我想要好好过生活，没有想要再去 r e v o l u t i o n 再闯荡一次。对，尤尤其是有一些那种比较年轻的，我心里没有很大，就是就是跟那种二十几岁可能就觉得啊，因为感觉就如果是玩一玩好了，然后我们这种就会觉得好像，对对对，是是是。所以 Rivos 的话是是怎么拼啊？呃 ，R I V O S， 他们在台湾其实有招人，然后 Power Software 都有了，只是他们现在这种就是很就是很 Stealth Mode 的那种情况，其实都是呃不见得会。真的有 open position 给你看， oh, okay. 就是说你就写信过去跟他讲说，就是哦我很想要加入你们公司，他们就会回一封信说，那我们来台湾，不管哪个咖啡厅喝个咖啡，对对对，大家聊一下，对对对对对对。像 Safari 这种已经是有点比较就是正规化，就是 HR 啦，然后会计啊什么，就用我们，我算反正大家就现在这种，你们成长的好快啊，对，对，真的真的很快，可是他现在已经变得很官僚，就是我九月要去外面讲，就我九月其实要去主播演讲那个我们公司的一些。算就是 contribution 啦，因为我们是虽然讲说是开始不太做工，可是还是会有一些东西是想要去 steer 这种 open， 因为有些东西你们是架构型的，今天 so open source 的那些 framework 可以单定性而已，后面要动它很难动，所以我们会尽量去想哦，但我们也不是不是恶意，可是就是有些东西 design 上它有 choice， 那我们会想要去 sway 这种，就是说，比如说像我是在做可能这一块，就可能我现在看你怎么希望这样做，要去 promote 我们的做法，是是是，对，那机票钱。然后老外就说：“你这个不能 virtual 参加就好吗？你一定要 in flight 吗？”<笑>我就想说：“你们 COVID 都结束了，了我不能，对吧、啊？为什么我不能坐飞机？”然后他就想说：“好了，我们再帮你争取一下。”我现在想，我靠，人家也是要要要要,要 IPO 了，然后就开始开始在确确认这些东西东看西看的，妈的！<笑>不过我是觉得其实。因为好了，我就老实说，我其实学历不好，我是教他念到一半，硕班就退学的那种。哦，因为我玩这种东西玩太玩太凶了，就是玩到老板就觉得，你真的有要念硕班吗？你这个还是去外面闯荡好了。然后就，对我后来后来就自主退学了。然后其实后来也是闯荡很久啊，就是一些 ，sorry sorry， 我看一下我的可以选，对，有一些那种其实像四大 IT 公司就不用讲，自己不去，就是我们至少去缅缅甸吧，缅甸吧，就是说。这个可能一六哦，这个助攻而且要签到，哦、算了算了对,对,对，然后想说算了，后来就在小公司打转，比如像金星也是一间很照顾我的公司，是是是，对，就后来就反正人总是有很多换来换去的地方，对，<笑>请问是呃学生吗？还是是哦，所有所有人士哦，学学，学位的，学分位的 ，OK 了解，哎，我们还是一是做一爹，你做一爹。<笑>刚才是就三三三遇三家的，没有，就是新创的。哦，新创，新创中间 ，Max 中间，哦，这么新。然后我我我我开始是在录制啊，我在新华章，然后后来我到台湾。哦哦，新华章我知道那个。说 PC 版要怎么画吗？对 ，PC 版是有软体，有有有 K K， 呃 K I C A D， 对，就那个也算 E D 啊，还是？它是一种就 P C B 的 E D A 吧，那个那个跟就是我现在的 P J E D A 跟 A C E D A 就是不太一样，那差差蛮远的，对不对？哎<笑>、欸，所以说教授您也是做这种？对对,對，我我就有有玩玩了，然后最近最近有有想要碰一下这方面的东西。了解了解，對對對對我我只是兼任而已的，我自己本身还在中影院，哦，对，中对。了解了解，那那也是老，那我们原本 cost card 其实更重要是、啊。对啊，没错，对对，我在 cost card 的还蛮蛮多人，对，像像之前总知道小 B 跟我还算熟，然后老老朋友了，老朋友了，对对对。好，好我我可能还要再收一下，那就不打扰了。没问题，没问题，谢谢谢谢谢谢。我可以跟你交换。哦，好，没问题，好的，没问题。呃 ，LinkedIn 的部分，我应该要怎么跟你交换会比较好？我跟你说。
呃，林我我直接开 LinkedIn 好了，然后打您的 ID 这样。不过我 LinkedIn 上的资讯有点久没有更新了，我最近因为这最近这这这几个月其实真的太忙，好事。微信度，这位在这地方，好，没问题，没问题。是做什么？发掘？呃，跟一些研究团队，因为我们一起把它抖起来。OK OK OK OK， 谢谢。好，不不不，我就是这个。OK， 好 OK 好。呃呃，你的我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我好的，没问题，那就不多打扰，不多打扰。谢谢谢谢。以后以后那个我们班有没有就多联络多联络。好，没问题，谢谢。有有一些问题的话，到时候再讲。其实，我抱歉，可能就当我多嘴问一下好了。我蛮好奇，就是您会想要承接这样的一个缺课吗？<笑>呃，我了解了，我了解，您的，我的相信就懂了，对对对对，对吧？也是因为其实真的是做起来有点，你既然弄到第二第二届，我是觉得有点累的，因为我在想说台湾不知道我们用的比较有兴趣。你说你说整个这样子，对吧？这个去筹办这样的一个活动，就是应该说这个轨道啦，就是大活动一定是附附在那个，就是他们 Costco 底下，对对对对对。如果不是靠个大家比较会参与的主题是，比较 spin software， 我们这种都是异类，对，你就光看今天的指数就知道了。对，我其实我其实蛮讶异的，所以说今年怎么会怎么会这么台湾硬体王国怎么？对，然后其实呃，其实这部分我当然教授那边可能有更更好的看法，不过我听我听到的版本是说，像 EDA 这种，其实他们因为很多产品说，就是 NDA 签的非常的严格，但是严格到说会是了解，就是可能。就是比如说，你甚至不能出来讲说你遇到什么问题，就是他他们的我听到的讲法是，就是他们跟我讲说，就是有些一些公司会觉得这你知道这问题的点在哪里，就就其实后面就大家知道是你在大概遇到什么问题了，对对对，就是那种反而不会这么 open open 的让他希望让大家跟大家分享说我做了些什么事，就是就是那个敏感度很很高，太高了，太高了，没错。所以其实我觉得可能，哎、欸，其实好奇就是老师您主要做的领域是，我这样做的东西跟演算法比较关系，演算法比较关系，是该不是 BA 演算法那边的？没有没有没有，不止，高不来之类的，没有没有，高不捞钱，做布局电路，对，所以所以是实际上想要都一下这个 Respy 的处理器，然后甚至于把一些不要说是东西加上去，了解了解。搭个小系统，那我实际上有有稍微看过一些，所以才会说我知道 Free License 有一三三一零 ，FE 三一零啊，然后对大概，如果您是但但是那个已经，我觉得那个我记得你们应该是一二四系列是跟 Cortex 很破比较接近，嗯、对对对，三一零已经比一二四还要再再大一再大要再大嘛，对。如果您是要真的很小扣的，蛮其实全东家那边有。就是 N D 四有 N D 四有 N 二跟二五，对对对，二五可能二五其实已经是那种 M P U 等级了，是是，对，那二二应该是您要的 class， 然后呃，如果您要买 Respy 的货的话，中国那边如果不排斥，嗯，那有一间叫那个新来 Nucle N U C L E I Nucle 新来科技，然后。当然，您说平头哥那是顶啊，平头哥也是有做这种 embedded code 的。可是如果是 open source 的话，我可能先用 open source。open source 的话，我我个人很推一颗，我不知道您有没有兴趣叫呃，您去查，就这个数字有点长，有点长，您可能真的需要用机器啊，就 CV 三二 ，CV 三二一四零 P。呃 ，A B C D E 有一四零 P， 哎，您知道这一颗？我知道这一颗。对，这这一颗是真的有拿去。黑炮，然后有 production 的，他有有呃有一间，我记得是法国公司叫 Green Waves， 然后他有拿去做黑炮，而且他有他自己特殊的 DSP 的 extension， 是,是，然后而且他们主打是低功耗的，就是如果您是有这种就是需求，我觉得应该是非常非常适合。有我我我我听过这个。
对，我所以所以你也推这一个、啊，我非常推那一个。如果您是学术要用，然后而且甚至未来可能要商转的话，我觉得这科应该是蛮适合。好，好好。那他们一呃 C V 三个是一个 family， 就是他们还有 C V 三一四零 S 吧，要做那个 security extension 的，然后跟 C V 三一四零 X， 他们预期要拿去做就是 core processor 的 interface 来去接其他的 module。对，我觉得其实 C P 三二一整个系列是一个还蛮，虽然我我自己本身是做 C P 二一破坏的，可是我觉得蛮蛮，他们佩服他们。是，对，就是一一 C P 三二这一系列。这一系列，对。好的。哎，所以您有在跑欧陆的研讨会吗？因为其实他们就是这一挂的在。Boston, 其实，其实我八月十号出国，九月到欧洲。哦、oh.。对，我，所以我，我九月九月的会议跟跟这些比较没关系，没关系，没关系。其实他们几个，就是那个 ETH 的处，那个叫 Luca Binini 嘛，我有点忘记，反正就是他们那几位，就是当初 C V 三二一四零 P 的前身叫 Risky R I S S， 对，他们几位都非常非常健谈。然后，其实我之前还在。前公司的时候，那时候因为玩 b a c k 然后玩一玩玩一玩，就觉得说想要看看 open source core 的效能。然后那时候他们讲说他们的 b a c k e r extension core 要 open source， 可是玩了大概半年一年，他就给 c o d 是。然后我就写说啊，我很有兴趣，想要做一下 venture marketing， 不知道你们 c o d 先给我。是是是。然后就把 c o d 寄过来，然后还说就是哦，我们很很好奇，说就是 commercial 的 b a c k e r core 的 provider 怎么看这件事。然后后来就跟他聊一下，其实。因为我觉得其实他们这些欧陆人对这种事情其实还蛮 open 的，不像台湾，其实你很多人会，我我我不是不是那个台湾的确是会东长一点<笑>西长一点，或者这个不能讲那个不能讲，啊会讲说哦我这个可能有跟哪东西有合作，對對對對對對對其实这个样子，对对对对。<笑>